Hey, what's going on my fellow Tauruses? This is your astrological monthly forecast for the month of August 2016. Thank you so much for joining me. Briefly before we get started, I just wanted to remind you guys that this is a general forecast for anyone born under the sun, moon, or rising slash ascendant sign in the sign of Taurus. And don't forget that you have a whole chart to look at. You're made of more than just one sign. So I have posted a link below to where you can obtain a free birth chart and take a look and see what other energies make up your astrological blueprint, okay, or your chart. And also, if you would like me to interpret your chart or give you a reading, I would love to do so. My email address is also in the description box. Shoot me an email and I will give you all the details of how we can set something up for you. All right, Taurus, now on to your general forecast. Taurus, this month our focus is continue to be on family a little bit and also a huge focus on our children, our creative projects, our hobbies, um, if we own our own business, and also on romance. Ooh, right? There's also going to be a bit of a focus on career because of the eclipse. So let me break down everything and I will explain in detail why this is. So Leo, the sign of Leo is four signs from Taurus, so this means it's our fourth house. The sun is going to be hanging out there until the 22nd of August. So what does this mean for us? We're going to be continuing the themes of the fourth house that were highlighted during the month of July, towards the end of July that is, of home and family. So maybe we could be finishing up moving or selling a home or trying to buy a home. Or maybe just getting things more structured and in order around the house. Or maybe we have just been homebodies and not really wanting to go anywhere. Maybe just staying close to home, close to family, close to what's familiar to us. Now the fourth house energy, um, it's also emotional fulfillment. So we can be focused on that, like the really deep soul emotional fulfillment and also our family roots and history because the fourth house is on the root of the chart, okay, the bottom of the chart. And that definitely represents your roots, literally, like your country of origin, your family of origin, your culture of origin, whatever that is. Um, so you can be maybe studying those things or maybe just connecting more with um, your family member whoever you consider to be like family now your fifth house is highlighted because number one first of all because Virgo is five signs from Taurus right and Venus moves there on the 5th of August to begin the Virgo fifth house energy for us so Venus represents um, how we enjoy ourselves how we may react when we are in love um, it's how we enjoy our free time. It's the five senses and Taurus we are ruled by Venus So wherever she travels we are especially affected by Whatever sign that is whatever area of our chart that is so with it being in the fifth house This is time for fun fun and romance This is excellent news for us Tauruses because the fifth house is a similar energy to the fifth sign on the zodiac wheel Which is Leo, okay, and I'm Apologizing if this math, astrological nerd math, is a little complicated for you, but just follow along, okay? So, anytime we have a fifth house transit, which for us is Virgo season, we have this Leo like energy that comes out of us, okay, to where we feel more proud, more confident. We feel like treating ourselves and maybe like treating other people too and spoiling each other or being spoiled. Also, the fifth house and the Leo like energy that it is similar to represent uh, the heart chakra okay because Leo rules the heart and then the heart chakra is located in this area and it represents anything that brings us such great joy confidence self-esteem all of those things are ruled by the heart chakra so anything that gets your heart jumping anything that gets butterflies in your stomach gets your heart racing like so excited about life that is the fifth house Venus there this means we can be enjoying everything so much more okay but mainly hobbies time with children time with romantic partners wherever venus travels also represents where you can meet love if you are open to that so if you are open to love oh don't mind my hair um, but if you are open to love taurus you can possibly meet someone while your heart chakra is so open by doing some really fun activities. Anything that brings out your creative side and opens your heart, like creative hobbies like art, okay? Or if you're into sports or anything like that. Or um, yeah, so while you're out, just enjoying yourself, enjoying life and being happy and fun and silly, you can 
open yourself up a lot more to receiving love from someone else or attention from someone else because your heart is so open right now. So definitely keep that in mind if that's something that you're open to. If you are a business owner, you created a business from scratch, from the ground up, you yourself, this is a great time with Venus being here to come up with some more creative ideas. Um, Venus softens whatever area of life she travels through as well. So she can bring more great energy to your business. Venus represents creativity in a way as well. So yes, more creative ideas to apply to your business. If you are open to um, having children, Venus in the fifth house is an excellent time to have more of a boost in fertility, so to speak. If you are not trying to have any children, Taurus, you know what to do with yourself. Venus in the fifth house is a time where you can go out and enjoy doing some super fun things like going to the movies, going to festivals, fairs, concerts. Being a total fangirl or fanboy is also Venus in the fifth house, like really crushing over celebrities or just people that you know in person also. Always having crushes on people constantly. That's Venus in the fifth as well. So it's a definitely a very fun time. This whole month, Mercury will be in the sign of Virgo in your fifth house. And wherever Mercury travels is where you are going to be a busybody. Your mind is going to be whizzing around, organizing, um, getting things in order, and really thinking about things on a logical level, trying to make sense of things in whatever area it travels. So for you, it's going to be in your fifth house. So if you have creative hobbies or business that you own or maybe even a creative hobby that you are turning into a business. Mercury in the fifth house is a, definitely a great time for you to utilize the energy in that way to come up with some ideas to really get your business in order or to be extra skillful when it comes to creative hobbies because Mercury also represents skills of the hands. Okay, So you can be a lot more skilled in things uh, like creative hobbies or even gambling and speculation is also the fifth house. So you may have a little more of an advantage there this month. Also because Jupiter is in your fifth house still at the same time. And Mercury and Jupiter will meet sometime this month. I don't have the exact dates this time. I am sorry for that. But they will definitely be in contact with each other this month. Okay, So Mercury and Jupiter together. Um, your mind is going to be expanded. Horizons going to be broadened. Jupiter is an energy of luck and optimism. So if it's in the fifth house of speculation, some of my Tauruses, if you're involved with sports, if you gamble, this is definitely a boost in luck in that area. So I would take advantage of that. Of course, I always say as a cautious Taurus, <laughs> be careful with your spending and your money and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, don't go too far, but you do have a little bit more of an advantage in that area. Mercury in the fifth house can have you really thinking about your children and trying to get things in order for them, especially because around this time of year in a lot of areas, um, like especially in the Western world, kids are going back to school. In my part of the world, kids go back to school in August, some even the last week of July, which is insane. It's like, what happened to kids having the summer off, right? But um, yeah, at this time of year, people are preparing to go back to school. So you may have to be hustling and bustling, like managing and organizing things for your kids. But Mercury is definitely going to help you out in that area to have more of a clear mind to be able to manage all of that stuff. Mercury is going to go retrograde on the 29th of August, okay? And this is in your fifth house in Virgo. Before that, it goes into shadow period on the 15th of August. People forget to mention the shadow period all the time, but I'm letting you guys in on this little Mercury retrograde secret that's hardly ever mentioned in mainstream media. So two weeks before Mercury goes actual retrograde motion, it starts slowing down its forward orbit two weeks before that. Now this is approximate. Nothing in astrology is like exact dead on 100% of the time. Sometimes it can be, but not always because it's, it's movements. It's a movement of planets and, and of matter, you know, and of energy. And you cannot completely 100% harness and measure that all the time, which is why a lot of people have a hard time fully believing in astrology but whatever that's a totally different subject and video what i'm saying is about two weeks before maybe even a little bit before that mercury goes retrograde it goes into shadow period it starts slowing down its normal forward motion slowing down right then it comes to a stop 
then it starts its retrograde motion and that's the date that is always announced mercury retrograde on this date while it's in shadow things can still you know you can still feel the effects of um, mercury not being in its normal orbit not doing it what it normally does to help you out with your thinking and your writing and your speaking and your movement your short distance movement movement of the hands all of those things so if you are concerned about like your vehicles working your technological devices especially the ones that you use for communication working properly i would say around the 15th even maybe a little before that make sure all those things are in working order they're protected with cases with virus protection with insurance all of that stuff you get your tune up you make sure your warranty is still good all of that stuff for your vehicles so remember shadow period the 15th around the 15th maybe before that prepare yourself as far as mercury retrograde in the fifth house since mercury retro is going backwards um, a lot of memories can come back to you about childhood, whether you have children and you're thinking about, you know, going back and looking at some of their old childhood things or your own childhood. Um, you can be wanting to go back to an, a time of your life where it was just complete innocence and fun. Another thing Mercury Retro in the fifth house can bring back is an old lover from the past, whether in mind, in spirits, in thought, or in person or over communication, social media, phone, what have you. So old dating partners that you have, they can start thinking about you. Ooh, I remember that lovely Taurus that always smelled good and they always had their outfit in order and they were so nice to me. I remember them. Whatever happened to them? What happened with our relationship? Why did we stop talking? Hmm, let me hit them up. Let me see what they're doing on Facebook and so on and so forth, so forth, that can definitely happen. Or it could be you doing that, thinking back to an old lover relationship that you had. So um, yeah, memories will come back to you. So just be aware of that. If you've been trying to get things in order for your business, Mercury retrograde happens, um, I would say, if anything comes up that ends up being an issue for you, um, Mercury is only bringing it back to you and to your attention so that you can finally get it fixed and make sure that it's back in working order and that it's you know properly, smoothly moving along. Um, so if, if things go haywire within your business and your creative hobbies and projects, don't fret Taurus because it's just for you to fix it. When Mercury goes forward again, things will be running smoothly and you will have learned, aha, maybe next time I'll make sure to protect this. Read the fine print here or look underneath this or that, like really look beyond the surface when it comes to certain things with my business or creative projects. So don't be scared of Mercury retrograde. It may cause a little bit of haywire to happen, but it's only here to help us out. On the 2nd of August, Mars moves into Sagittarius and this is in our eighth house. Now, previous to that, Mars was in our seventh house of relationships when it was in Scorpio. Mars finishing up its orbit in our seventh house is like hallelujah because we could have had some conflicts come up with other people, but, um, and it went retrograde. I mean, this whole year so far could have been a little bit crazy when it came to dealing with others, especially in our relationships, but Mars likes to solve problems. It likes to solve conflicts. It doesn't just go picking fights with people all the time. Sometimes it can be if you're using the energy the incorrect way. Um, what it's supposed to be used for if you have aggression is to make sure you're going after things that are unjust and unfair and um, resolving that and coming to a common ground so that you can move along with your lives and not fight, okay? But while it was in your seventh house, let me tell you, I know it was a rough time, but now good news is it's moving out of that area into the eighth house. Mars in the eighth is an opportunity for us um, to resolve any issues and conflicts that have to do with trauma, for one thing, okay? Old trauma, past trauma, traumatic experiences that um, the eighth house rules like things that you bury back in your subconscious mind purposely because it's so painful. Well, the bad news is Mars is going to dig that stuff out, okay? Just being honest with my Taurus people. The good news is this is an opportunity to unbury those demons and skeletons so that we can finally get rid of them and not just try to keep them suppressed while still kind of coming back and hanging out in the forefront of our minds all the time because you know that can happen. Taurus is we tend to hang on to things a little too long just being honest about our energy and Mars in the 8th house is an opportunity to really just get rid of stuff. 
This can also mean stuff that you have hanging around physically, which we tend to do, okay, of maybe a past relationship or um, material items that belong to someone of the past and we really, it's, it's just time to get rid of it or that remind us of someone, it's time to get rid of it. Or even things that we shared once upon a time like in a relationship or a divorce that are like physical uh, material items get rid of them because items carry energy Taurus and if we want to really just have positive energy around us and not old stuff hanging around we need to get rid of it so this goes for the material world and also also our emotional world and our spiritual world okay getting rid of old crap and junk Mars is gonna dig all that out and be like come on Taurus let's work on this let's get it going get it done and get it out of here. Mars in the 8th can also be an opportunity to work on some joint finances, um, whether that be earning money with a business that you own and that you operate with another person, um, like a joint business venture, or maybe even working out some problems that have to do with earning money through the government, through um, alimony or child support. Cases can be, you know, um, won at this time or fought at this time. Maybe some issues with taxes can be worked out. So Mars in the 8th, it's going to be going on um, in this transit for a while. So these are just a few things that it can have us working on during that time. All right, so let's get into these moons. Every month there is a new moon and a full moon that happens, okay? And the new moons bring brand new life brand new beginnings it's a birth of something new a new opportunity um, it's when the sun and the moon come together in the same sign in the same degree at the same time sun is paternal the moon is maternal so it's like a mother and father come together to birth a brand new thing okay a new thing in your life this month is in the sign of leo the sign of creation so this is awesome and this is in our fourth house of home and family so this happens on august 2nd uh, manifest and think about and meditate and pray about the things that you want brand new to happen for you in regards to home and family around august 2nd this can mean some of my tourists want a new home just any place of living that you feel comfortable but something brand new can definitely happen for you at that time maybe you move in somewhere um, that's your own place or maybe like you have people living with you and they move out and then that's a new beginning within your living space you know that as well so all the work you've been doing with like trying to make your home a comfortable place can be accomplished and have a new beginning happen with this new moon. This new moon is making a trine aspect, which is a very positive aspect to Saturn, which is hanging out in our eighth house right now. The eighth house represents joint income and also and intimacy. So with a new moon there making that aspect and the two working together, what it can bring you is a new beginning. Hi, it can bring you a new beginning that um, maybe for example, you guys get a new home okay and the home itself is represented by the fourth house and then the loan that you have to get and work on together for the home is the eighth house so with the positivity the positive aspect there this can help to give you a boost when purchasing a home in the financial area and in the comfort area as well but don't forget saturn is all about hard work okay so it can give you a boost yay we got this new home but don't forget about the hard work of paying off the home loan together coming together on the financial part of it so that's just a couple of examples of what this new moon can bring for you so the full moon happens on the 18th in the sign of aquarius it's at 26 degrees aquarius this is our 10th house of career and this is actually an eclipse this month so what this means is the sun and moon are opposite okay uh, that's what a full moon is so the sun is in leo it's down there in your fourth house the moon is going to be full up in our 10th house in the sign of aquarius which is career so home and family career and then it's going to be making a sextile which is a positive aspect to uranus which is hanging out in our 12th house so all of this math, what all this means is um, there's going to definitely be a final decision that's made around career that can affect your home and family life and also your inner emotional well-being. So this can mean maybe you get a career promotion of some sort. And at home, it's like, well, you know what? We still are your family. We still need your attention, even though you're this big career person now, Taurus. So don't forget about us, right? Uranus is also uh, the ruling planet of Aquarius and with it giving a positive aspect to the moon in your 10th. This to me says that um, whatever decision is going to be made about career, it's going to be something that you're going to make sure that this 
career move is true to you, true to you, and true to your creativity, true to your emotional and sp spiritual well-being, or else you're not going to really care for it and go along with it. But it, So it's going to be a very big career decision, Taurus, so just be prepared for that. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to pull two cards for you guys this month from my Angel Tarot deck from Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. So I will be right back. I'm going to shuffle and bring back the cards. All right, Tauruses, so I shuffled very well and I pulled the cards for you. So for the new moon on August 2nd in Leo, we got the wheel card. Okay, so as you can see, the wheel card, and it's a number 10, which is interesting because this is happening opposite to your 10th house. And then um, you'll see why I say it's interesting once I show you the full moon card. But anyway, the wheel card um, is things move forward. It's a new beginning, which a new moon brings anyway. Um, if you look at the number 10, the number 10 reduces down to the number 1. And number 1 represents new beginnings as well. And the message on the card is a time for positive change. A situation suddenly moves forward. Fortune is on your side. What this also tells me, um, Archangel Michael is on this card and he has his arms folded. And he has a stern look on his face. And once again, the card is number 10. I associate all of that stuff with the 10th house, okay? Even though this, this new moon is happening in your fourth house of home and family. So what I, would, what I get from this is um, you've had to maybe take, take charge of things within your household with uh, maybe bringing order to it, maybe with moving, maybe with just cleaning up around the place, you know, getting things situated. You had to take charge at home a lot in this past month, you know, and then the new moon is happening in the house of home, <laughs> okay, and it's making an aspect to Saturn. Um, the arms folded makes me think of Saturn, Capricorn, and the 10th house, which all mean the same, similar thing. So taking charge within your house, you've had to do. It may have left you kind of stressed out, to be honest. But a situation is finally moving forward. Um, I know for some Tauruses, um, maybe they had, you know, a living situation which wasn't that great. Maybe living with people or people living with them, or maybe living in a place that wasn't very comfortable for you. Or maybe your landlord was whack or something, you know. But finally, the new moon in the fourth house, is going to bring a positive change to move things forward with being comfortable in your place of living, whatever that means for you. So for the full moon, the card I pulled was the 10 of fire. So let me give you a close up of that, just a sec. Bam, 10 of fire. So as you can see, the dragon on there has so many different colors in its wings. And there's a lot of irons in the fire, so to speak. A lot of arrows in the fire, okay? And um, they're all different colors as well. So that's a very busy card. Um, usually on cards, there can be a concentration of maybe like one or two or just a couple of colors, okay? Which the colors, to me, when I look at them, represent like the chakras, which rule certain areas of the body, certain areas of life. And when there's so many different colors in here, that means there's just a lot going on. Um, and even the card says, too much work, accept help from others, life is out of balance, stress-related health concerns. Now, because the full moon is, um, in, it's, it's a moon in your 10th house of career opposite the sun that is in your fourth house of home and family. This, and then it's uh, making an aspect to Uranus in the 12th house of how you take care of yourself mind, body, and spirit, but mainly spirit and emotional self, okay? Um, this card is saying that whatever decision that's going to be made based around career, it can be a little bit stressful, just being honest, because of the opposition to your home and family life, as I had mentioned earlier, you know, just generally talking about the full moon. So you are going to have to make a decision. You are going to make sure that you keep things in balance. It can be an exciting time, things moving in career, maybe a big promotion or big change, a big offer or something. But don't forget about your family and don't forget about taking care of yourself, Taurus. Okay, so don't be afraid to ask for help. And I know because I am a Taurus, I have four personal planets in Taurus. So trust me, I'm speaking from experience. Okay, this card talks to me too, all right? 
it's hard for us to ask for help. It just is. We are the, the kings and queens of DIY next to Virgo. We like to just do things ourselves. We don't like to ask for help because it, we feel like it's a sign of weakness at times, you know, because we're like, we're strong, we're bulls, we can do anything, we're healthy, we can get through anything. We don't like people meddling in the things that we like to do our way, okay? Because it's our way or the highway. Sorry, that's just the way that we are. But we will need to ask for help this month, okay? If we get this big career promotion thing, we may need somebody to help us out around the house. Maybe ask your significant other, your husband, your wife, whoever, um, maybe some family members because the fourth house where the sun is at rules family. Ask them, hey, can you please help me out? I'm so busy with career. I've got this big promotion. Will you be able to babysit for me? Will you be able to come over and help me clean once a week? Help me cook. I mean, something. Don't be afraid to ask for that help. And I, I'm thinking about this and I need to take my own advice. <laughs> So Tauruses, that is our card for the full moon. It is the 10 of fire. All right, Taurus, well, that was your monthly forecast for the month of August. I hope it was helpful and insightful for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see monthly horoscope videos from me every single month. And also follow me on social media. I'm trying to be more active on there. I'm on Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagrams, all that stuff. So follow me on there. Hit me up via email or any of those social media outlets if you would like a reading and i hope you guys have an excellent month i will see you guys in september peace